so hi today we have with us krishna chandan nayar who is an animation filmmaker how are you doing good good just working same <laughs> still working <laughs> yeah uh, you are in india right now yeah right i've been back in so, india since like 2 years now 2 years ah okay yeah. I, i i didn't know that <laughs> um i mean like minus this year with the whole corona thing like i don't think we count this anyone yeah. counts this year <laughs> this yeah. this year i was actually in france i was on exchange in france when the whole yeah. corona virus hit yeah and then i had to come back on one of those uh, vande bharat plane oh, things oh. <laughs> how was that oh that was a that was a that was an experience <laughs> it was a weird <laughs> sure one it was. <laughs> like once in a lifetime were you on exchange so, yeah i was on exchange uh mm-hmm. in uh, ras and okay. uh, but the exchange was fun <laughs> nice so uh, I, i'm just going to so we already have like a question which is sir how was your life at nid so i think i think we should just start with that okay how, uh, uh, so for me an id yeah. was uh, like i i have not really been outside uh, kerala right like until that point so for me an id was this place where i've seen you know people from beyond mumbai like for the first time like so uh, <laughs> the yeah i mean like until then like i've just been to bangalore which was like the the big city so for me like interacting with like people from like a big city and everything was fairly new so even english for that matter i had to like phrase the sentence once in my head and you know then speak uh, and so these were these kind of things like it was all new for me like even even like something as simple as like seeing a girl smoke and all those like oh my god like a girl <laughs> <smoke>. <laughs> so, oh my god so, yeah and like interacting with different like people from different uh, uh culture in like within india like was such a like different experience for me like it really yeah like so many like customs and even festivals yeah, yeah. to celebrate maybe also you, you deal with like homesickness and everything and you lose weight then you gain weight and <laughs> so you go oh, through i had lost uh, some 15 kilos in the first year because oh, uh, wow. i i that doesn't seem very healthy yeah the first month i was like very excited about the mess food and then after that like it just started like i'm like oh it's not as exciting as it was in the first few weeks <laughs> <laughs> especially the lunch i couldn't tolerate so i stopped eating lunch uh for a for about 6 months so that was like <laughs> like oh, wow. easy weight reduction <laughs> and uh, <my laughs> i think i think this would be what happens yeah yeah no my grandma Even started I- crying seeing me like at the at the railway station oh, no. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> so even I, even in my batch, like I think every batch, there are students who come from Kerala who just can't like deal with the food at uh, NID. Maybe it's really different yeah, from yeah. what you usually. Yeah, and like Sunday was supposed to be like this home f- home food kind of a feel with like alu paratha. For me, like <laughs> like it didn't <laughs> make any sense. Like home food, this is not home food. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. yeah i mean like it took a while but then it also like uh i mean food wise also i started liking gujarati food and now i'm married to a gujarati so i'm oh. living in a gujarati household during this whole quarantine situation you're basically so, half gujarati already right now <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah i've become half gujarati now <laughs> i think everyone who comes to like nid just ends up becoming part gujarati yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the end of it <laughs> Yeah, it became like a second home, right? So more than anything else, like it was, like really opened my mind, especially with like uh, the interaction with different kinds of people uh, and uh, learning new languages, um, seeing new films, like you know the films that you are not used to. Until then, like there was this kind of films that I'm used to watching. Like I used to watch mostly Malayalam films, and then uh, even English was. you know like just a certain kind of genres i used to watch so like you are exposed to so many different kinds of films uh, at nid like that also like really opens up your mind 
so we, when i when i went went to france also like they used to ask uh, do you have like cultural shock and like i already had that in india yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. yeah uh so wait um, i'm just going to you received a question which i think uh, we can start with right now which is did you always want to be an animator i was always interested in drawing so i didn't know like it could be a career because my father is like a closeted artist he is always he always wanted to draw write uh, stories and he still writes like by the sides uh, short stories and all but uh, he he always was interested in drawing so he always encouraged me when i started like drawing the first time like he got me all the paint supplies and everything and like <laughs> made sure i draw so he always encouraged me that way uh but i didn't know like it was going to be like you know like a career thing until like uh one of my friends jishnu from i don't know if he's on the live but uh he had um, told me about this college called nid uh we used to cycle together to school so on the way he used to tell me how you study at nid and then you know the these big uh, animation companies from abroad are co- going to come and like pick you from there and uh, you you're going to earn 20000 rupees a month like what else do you need i'm like wow 20000 rupees <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money right i've never seen 20000 rupees at that age so uh, so i i i started getting interested like in this uh, you know like idea of doing something else apart from engineering because that's what where i was heading like all most of my batchmates were also going to do engineering and i started getting interested in this he also used to uh, i used to make flip books in school by the side of you know textbook and all so he introduced me to flash uh, and i started like secretly i found out that there is flash in my computer in the computer lab so instead of c++ i used to sit and make adnan sami uh, dance to lift kara de <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first spider man movie had just come out then in my eighth standard or something uh th- this was the sam remy spider man like the the oh, big oh, one yeah, yeah. one that mm-hmm. had come out so i was really into spider man so i used to like animate spider man swimming sw- swinging uh, from one place to another <laughs> all these oh, things wow. and then i was caught i was caught uh, by the teacher one day but she was so impressed by the fact that i was sitting and <laughs> animating she didn't say anything <laughs> yeah. so, so i guess you never really uh, had any doubt that you were going to do animation like if you had to do design you would do animation no in fact like when I, nid had so many options right uh, i was so yeah. confused my all my relatives were all like saying do this do that like you know and also i was looking at what could you know like could be safe in the end like once i get out of nid i should have a job and everything in terms of yeah. that i was seeing and uh there was this uncle of mine who was a an a, interior designer architect so he told me you know do do furniture and interior design i'll give you a job over here you come and j- join me so i was like very sure i was going to do furniture and okay. interior design so okay. during the interview i in fact told them that i want to take up furniture and interior design <laughs> and they asked me <laughs> what change would you do uh, to this room and i was like this is uh, the, the board rooms right so they they removed uh-huh. the barricade in between like a um, not, what what is a blind uh, whatever that that thing is so yeah, it became like a one big room so there was a pillar in in between so i saw there's this it's nice saw the pillar so i'm like i would remove hmm. this pillar <laughs> i didn't, I didn't, care about it. <laughs> I didn't think the ceiling would probably come down or anything i would remove this pillar <laughs> <laughs> I am I am surprised that I got through after <laughs> this thing so probably like wouldn't let you inside FID <laughs> did they heard you talk like <laughs> yeah no but after coming to NID I started leaning towards all the courses and foundation that was more animation like you know like so SFS for instance was like one of my favorite uh Ooh, courses SFS, yeah. yeah so it had a lot of like especially the parts part where you to uh, tell stories create story and all these things i really mm. enjoyed so i started getting more sure about wanting animation then 
Oh, yeah. okay. That's <laughs> nice. And <laughs> so in animation right now, uh, so you made in your uh, stop motion course, you made a film called Pidding Padoon. <laughs> Did I say yeah. it right? Yeah. Okay. The last minute title that was. <laughs> <laughs> So that was done by a group of four, right? You were in four of my batchmates. Yeah, people. I mean three yeah. other batchmates. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. um, I think you showed it last time uh, in the auditorium when you were uh, doing a bath session. Like right now, I don't think we can show it. So yeah. Can you yeah, tell yeah. us a bit about it? So the film is there on YouTube. I don't know if it's on my YouTube, and it's it's there on. Vimeo as well, I think. Uh, I found it on Behance actually, right here on Nupur Mukherjee's profile. Nupur's, ah, huh, she has put so, it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, if you guys want to see the film, you can go uh, and see it online. Yeah. So this was yeah. like Vaibhav used to conduct the stop motion workshop. Workshop. I don't know if he still does it, uh, but uh, Vaibhav is known for stop motion. So he used to conduct it then and. Uh, Yeah, like a lot of it was jugad. Um, I had, uh, uh, I mean, like we made the characters and everything, and then we learned a lot while doing the characters, uh, while doing the production. The character, in fact, like has two heads. If you if you see the film, so uh-huh. <laughs> so it turned out like after making the character, we realized that the head is too heavy, so the legs are too tiny. Oh no! <laughs> Character stand was such a task, and if you see the film, there's a very wobbly uh, walk cycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we <laughs> we just couldn't get the walk cycle right because the character is just too heavy in the head. I think <laughs> it, I think it gives a character of its own, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and and also like uh, like this whole jugad thing is something that like that. is there in every department in nid i think so uh since we didn't have enough time like we had to do everything starting from the set design to characters and everything so uh the sets were all borrowed from the previous uh like the seniors who did the sets oh. last year so we modified that into like you no know, suit our film and okay. i saw recently like when i had come last time i had come to nid i saw like some parts of bring prun like still there and <laughs> still there yeah so i think i think i think there are some some yeah i think i've seen them too which is lying around yeah so it just like becomes history and it's funny like even we have seen our seniors uh film models and everything and it's just like really really cool to see you know these things sitting mm-hmm. there Yeah. Everything being reused is very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and like we, we literally used to live inside that tiny room for a month. I hadn't gone outside. I think like I used to just quickly wow. go for a shower when I used to not be able to tolerate my stench <laughs> like every five days <laughs> because I'm constantly there like working. So I quickly go for a shower and come back. Other people used to get us food. uh so that was like now that i'm thinking about it like you know it was so nice like everyone was contributing helping us out uh, <laughs> in one way or the school. other ha <laughs> uh, seeing if you were still alive <laughs> no, oh gosh so it 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 so it uh, the course was how long it was like oh, a month it was supposed to it was supposed to the shoot was supposed to get done in um um a week but we we oh. took just a month for the shoot So it just got extended. Yeah, I can't imagine like such a such a long and like detailed yeah. film getting over in just a week. Yeah, and then But, like I had done internship with Vaibhav, uh, so we finished uh-huh. the film over okay. the internship time, and then Vaibhav introduced us to Roto Shah, who is a sound designer who works with Vaibhav, uh, and he was kind enough to like we had some ideas for the film. uh and we approached him we, we told him like you know i i tried out some sound myself with like using basic sound is a sound that, that i had recorded like on my crappy mic and uh mm-hmm. i showed him he's like let me just do it <laughs> like i guess <laughs> but let me just do it and then he did it for free like we sat on his head oh, for wow. like 10 days and yeah 
that was also an experience <laughs> mm definitely i'm sure <laughs> and um, so after this after nid we have like a very uh, pointed question that just says how did you end up in france <laughs> i did how did i end up in france so i <laughs> was like after nid i was trying to finish my uh, animation uh, film the the graduation film but like i think i took up something too ambitious <laughs> to finish on my own so it just kept like i kept struggling to finish and also like it was also like partly my fault because like i i lacked certain discipline that was required at that point and like i kept easily getting distracted i i think like 6 months of production time like and just i just ended up like chilling i learned how like learn, just from online i learned how to play guitar and i was doing other things <laughs> only <right? laughs> so okay. yeah like i and then when i sit and work i would like you know like easily get distracted so it just kept taking a lot of time and meanwhile we also like bunch of us got together we started like this small startup called bechen nagri like where we use we collaborated with like you know artists and we sold artworks on sketchbooks and pillow covers and we traveled around in different festivals and events and all and we kept selling uh, our products uh, so all that happened like we beach may we used to take up illustration and animation small scale animation projects so like i started feeling like i started like moving away from animation mostly it was uh like st- i was i was doing more of illustration and uh, also handling this whole beach and agri thing traveling around and all that so like i wanted to get back to animation so then i thought mm-hmm. like i lacked certain confidence uh at that point in actually finishing a film uh and i wanted to i felt like i needed to learn a little more and i wanted to get a different perspective different experience so oh. shekhar mukherjee he suggested this college the school called uh, la pudrier i was planning to apply to gobla but like the the fees and everything was getting like was going out of my uh mm-hmm. reach <laughs> was too expensive <laughs> to study there so laputre that way like it, the fees was also like it's actually lesser than what we pay at an id for a year oh, so wow. <laughs> that's yeah. really nice <laughs> yeah so it turned out to be like something i could try out and like it it was focusing spe- specifically on animation direction so i just tried it out but i didn't like speak any french or anything i just some gut feeling i just like applied i went there then i realized that i what i've done <laughs> that oh. that course was in french so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i i can kind of relate because i went on exchange and uh, i don't speak any french either just uh-huh. sitting there like staring at their faces <laughs> did you learn french over time while you were there I mean, yeah like i had done some basic like a1 level french training but uh uh-huh. i went thinking i'll be able to manage now but then they were speaking some other language all together like when <laughs> when the, <laughs> the 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 how they speak and like the, what we learn is so different yeah 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 like yeah. when they speak everything just melts into one sound yeah, you don't yeah. know where one word starts and when it ends yeah so the first 3 yeah. months was quite hectic for me like it was uh like my brain was working out so much that like after the by the end of the day everyone would go and like chill and i'm like i'm going to go sleep now <laughs> like this was the case with the other uh, foreign people who had come internet like people oh. there, there were two other people from uh, one from ukraine and canada uh, oh so three of us would just be so drained out by the end of the day <laughs> we had no energy for anything else but over a period of time we had to uh like the attack course was in french right so we had to keep constantly talk in french uh we had to uh, we were shown films and theater and mm-hmm. everything by the school uh so all of that was in french uh i mean even the even the films were in other language subtitles would would be in french so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <in> french <laughs> so uh, yeah i mean eventually we didn't have 
any option but learn the language we even had script writing course which was in french we so when everyone is writing like big scripts we would write like lkg ukg level scripts oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that was good enough like it was it was like you know like still we learned quite a lot and with each film that i made i would learn new set of you know like vocabulary and i had to pitch these uh-huh. ideas again in french so with each pitch my french also with that film got better <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, so in france like right, so like at nid there is a certain style of teaching animation so is it different in france like how is it different what i mean in think? france i don't know but like this la, la poudre in particular expects people to have a certain animation experience beforehand uh okay. so there was like the least experienced guy was uh, this 18 year old bo- boy was also there who had just done one year completed one year at some other college so oh, he okay. had also like basic experience there it i don't know somehow people don't really care about finishing a course it's about like if you are not like liking it they get out and they actually say i have attended one year of this school so that that's how they say like it's not like i flunked an id you don't say, like it's not a thing you say oh. so that also is something that goes into their cv saying you know i attended one or two years of whatever course that's interesting i think we should have that here too <laughs> yeah so it's not like something they are ashamed of or like it's just something that they they change change of plans that happened and something's not working out they always jump to something else so yeah they expect you to have some basic uh, knowledge of animation so what happened was like first 3 months there were some basic courses like storyboarding and like film theory and all that but after that we were constantly working on one project after another like it was either hypothetical projects or real projects so we would sometimes do promos for a festival there was a theater festival in this city called valence where we were with the school is okay. so we were we as a batch made promos for the the theater festival which was screened at the before the theater started the performance started oh so, that's cool yeah so different kinds of projects there were series and we we had to pitch for our short films and so wide range of projects we got to work on so group mm-hmm. projects sometimes individual projects so each has its own uh, problems that you have to deal with okay. so yeah it was so- it was and then also at each stage you get to interact with like people from the industry which is again like the case in nid also but uh-huh. uh, yeah so you get guidance at each stage from these people yeah okay so one thing i want to do right now is i want to try playing a video of yours okay. <laughs> and um and which one should i play should i play this one coke como yeah <laughs> this was uh, like really? in fact for the theater festival that i was talking about ah okay but I, i i doubt you can read the subtitles <laughs> so uh, yeah this was i, I just remember this was a uh, a uh, short film festival called uh, clermont ferrand so it uh, it's a very well known festival over there uh, in a place called clermont ferrand yeah sorry sorry go ahead yeah so uh, it's a since it's a short film festival we thought we'll play around like this was done by me and my batchmate uh, ev so both of us were just stuck on you know like idea and i think like we had 5 days to make this and on the third day we were like let's just do this <laughs> like we couldn't we were just really stuck with the idea and like since it's a short film festival we thought we'll cool como means like how short is it so mm-hmm. there's a really long snake which is really concerned about how short are the short films so he's just like troubling everyone <laughs> 
how short are these short films how short are these these short films and uh, that's just generally the attitude right like people don't see short films too much like in the theaters and all they prefer it. they are used to a long uh, feature length uh, films right mm-hmm. so so then there's a elephant with a really small trunk <laughs> <which can't laughs> <get some stuff. laughs> it's not like how big or small the films are like that what matters it's uh, the film that matters like so just what's the film <laughs> so everyone's just like <laughs> so he's like excuse me while like again he's is troubling them <laughs> so yeah. how like it's a, it's a very unique style like with paper cut outs you've done the animation yeah like what made you choose that that medium so again like with the time that we had we had to be very uh this thing uh, uh we we couldn't have more time like we we couldn't one of the constraints over there in uh, la pudre is that you have to finish everything in time on time so okay. this was fairly easy you know like we just had to make the puppets and not much movement happens so we thought we'll it'll be fun like try out something apart from 2d animation so <laughs> yeah and like for this like basically the snake and everything we have tied all of it together so we just have to like slowly slowly oh, keep yeah. moving uh, these things and then it's all attached with this um, i don't know what it's called in english that tata fix we call it tack tack blue, blue tack blue tack ah, yeah 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 i yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so blue tack so it's a kind of thing right ha huh. so yeah so basically time management ke liye we made sure like we find something fairly simple the medium medium that is easy to animate with doesn't take too much mm-hmm. time so we, because we had just 3 days to finish this uh, start wow from, only 3 days yeah no we had so we had to start like making like production had to be done in the, in the sense like the character all the models had to be made and then like place mm-hmm. them together shoot and then composite and sound all these things sound i think like was worked on later we we gave the uh, we had to record the sound and then somebody else put the sound and no in fact no, no no for this project we had to do the sound ourselves so that's it's all oh. had, to be, had to be done three days yeah three days like within three days damn we made we made such a nice video a yes. film sorry <laughs> um so like okay i'm just going to there, there's another question which we got uh, on the bate instagram account Uh, which is kind of related to this which is what is your favorite tool to work with or medium to work with and why so i mean this particular film was done with paper cut out i try to have some kind of hand element in my films i usually do 2d films i don't i not like i don't know 3d uh, really so i i my when i'm doing my 2d films i try to uh explore as much as possible during the treatment uh time it's also like time is also a concern for me so uh, i have to uh, i try to do something that is uh, feasible in that you know like in a short period of time so yeah i mean off late i've been sticking to so, like tv paint animation which is uh, traditional 2d animation but on software uh mm-hmm. but uh, even there i try to do some kind of hand done element like a, maybe a background using uh, oil pastels or watercolor or something yeah so it's not like too digital in the feel yeah, yeah, yeah. it has that kind of like handmade feel to it yeah so yeah i don't i try not to deviate from that too much Mm-hmm. so um earlier you were talking a lot about like when you when you came to nid you like you were a little homesick and like you know missing missing kerala and stuff like that so i mm-hmm. think uh, now is a good time i'm going to show the teaser to chandran's cafe oh, yeah. and then maybe we can uh, <laughs> talk about that a little bit uh Wait a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
such an absurd premise like three french astronauts going to the moon and they meet a a a couple from kerala was there so like what what made you think about this so there's a saying in kerala like wherever you go there's a mallu over there you'll find one <laughs> and like even if you go on the moon there will be a guy with a tea stall over there so that's <laughs> like the beginning of this concept like i had this running in my mind like since while i was at an id uh like what if there is a an actual tea stall on the moon and i sub, it, it was subconsciously that this idea uh i felt like it was like the perfect time to do this idea like while because in the first year holidays at lapudrier we had to we were told to think of ideas for your your final year film so this this idea kept running in my mind and then it's not something i consciously did but eventually the film turned out to be like my observations of you know like long distance how people behave uh, when they are away from home uh, long distance relationships and these things mm-hmm. <laughs> so i was also going through a long distance relationship which is quite evident in the end of the film and uh yeah. also, sad, like, sad <laughs> so in the like when i've been in nid like that was my first time being away from home and like again france again like further away from home uh so the i've i've met people you know who are in similar situations and i've seen like how they bring these things that remind them of their home and you know the, the, that tie with their hometown never uh is gone i've seen like some of my uncles who got, like you know been in us for like years they are like bigger patriots than like <laughs> probably like people who have who live in india i feel yeah <laughs> they get like so emotional and nostalgic and all these things you know? so I, i i wanted to like play around with that and also the uh things that i found funny or interesting about like this whole uh, new culture that i came into the french culture right i was living with these people and observations from that there were a lot of other observations also like some of these made into the film and uh, yeah i mean it's only after i finished making the film i realized that it was subconsciously like something i did like you know uh, like these observations came together like mm-hmm. as a film <laughs> but yeah so <laughs> is i mean i really liked how it's sort of like two cultures coming together into the film uh, in a yeah. way and how you were able to show like minute details of both and cultures again, like was... something i learned while i was there is like how to so like french audience in general is very accepting of a uh, new perspective new point of view i've, I've noticed like or maybe i think that's the case with the european uh, audience i think so i i could very easily like talk about you know like my culture and everything over there they were very curious about these things so mm-hmm. as a filmmaker also i had to um uh, make sure that these ideas were translated to a an international audience because while while i was writing the film there were a lot of things that uh, i took for granted in the sense like i thought like you know like ha huh, this is this you know i everyone will understand but then when i was actually talking uh, to people about it i realized that you know this is uh, something only i or in other indians probably would understand or not, not even indians like uh, people in kerala would understand uh, not some somebody outside that culture so i had to 
make sure you know like i i give some kind of explanation to these things i can't remember anything in particular from chandran's cafe but there's like something from my one minute film that i had done uh, called for the love of god uh uh-huh. there is a scene where uh, uh the this this guy i mean you can probably show it after uh, show the okay. film maybe so should i show it first i think yeah, i'll show okay. it first okay, okay. make it easy uh i hope it loads this time i don't know why <laughs> so i don't know if, like it was clear enough uh, but uh, people got an idea <laughs> at least yeah i guess <laughs> so uh, one of the things that i didn't realize like which played a big role in uh, for the people outside india to understand this film uh, which i realized later was that uh, this this thing where this guy before giving the coin he does something you know like like this oh, yeah, yeah yeah so that sort of made them understand that this is something associated like there's some spiritual reason for uh him doing that like you know it's uh like you know like it it is meant for god so this is an offering uh-huh. to god so that is not yeah. something that i thought like people won't understand but mm-hmm. thankfully i did some like you know just something that i felt like adding but a lot of people pointed out to me you know like uh, that that thing really communicated you know like subconscious like just something as simple as that was enough like to convey a meaning like without any explanation uh yes yeah. yeah like and and this is i that's when i realized like you know this uh giving money inside a box like this i mean it's probably there like in the western uh world as well but i don't know like maybe this particular setting may like it might not be very easy for them to understand so mm-hmm. yeah. things like this is it's, it's very important uh like when you have to convey your idea which is like very local to an international or a audience which is, which who don't understand your local culture i think it it also comes down to like observation right how good you are at observing those oh, yeah, tiny yeah, that tiny things that, that matter that is something i tell everyone like keep observing like always uh and like try to make a note of it or sketch of it or something like or mental note even if nothing mm-hmm. yeah so okay. when you consciously do that like i i feel like you actually make it a point it becomes a part, part of your uh you know like natural thing to do eventually uh-huh. yeah. like okay. something i so- i feel like uh, uh, no sorry i i, I wanted to bring up uh, the, this question that suvo chakraborty had asked uh, about story how i come up, uh, go go about uh, telling a concept or something 
don't know. Yeah, how uh, form a story out of an idea or scenario? If you can discuss about story structure. So because I, I brought it up because I remembered a story uh, specific to this film. So like, I mean, in general, I, I mean, there's this whole three act structure that is there. uh that pretty much everyone knows of like the whole introducing the character uh character something that he's not comfortable with or like a something new is introduced uh mm-hmm. where, where he has to deal with a problem and over time like there's a character growth that happens and then the climax resolution so that is what like that is the basic thing but then i try not to restrict myself Uh, when i'm thinking of ideas uh with this structure so i what i usually do is ask questions about back uh back story create a back story of these characters ask questions about this character like one main thing important thing i learned at la pudre like is this thing called word called enjeu which means what is at stake so every time you create a story like you uh have to think of what is at stake for the character uh, the main uh-huh. character or whichever character so that is something i really started thinking once i uh you know after that like from that point on and like i brought it up because in this particular film uh in the early version the film started at a random man giving money and then it's not going to the gods so the guy who was guiding us he asked me what is at stake in this film so and i'm like nothing <laughs> so <laughs> what is who is losing what people are losing money but then uh still like you're not really connecting with anyone really so he said what if the main guy who is putting the money has something to lose so then we started thinking and then we came up with the idea that you know like the he's a he's probably a farmer who has you know the barren land sun is there like crops are all dried up so he takes out one last penny that he has in the hope of things getting better so mm-hmm. you know like so emotionally like he has like a lot to lose like the one penny that he is giving in you know like yeah those are like his hopes and dreams ha huh. so there is more at stake for that one person and so finally that i made that connection of you know like this man is uh, looking up for rain and then the gods are also looking up for the coin rains uh-huh. the end. so oh. that's that's how this whole that journey happened <laughs> so yeah okay all right we have 15 minutes remaining yeah. so i just uh, move forward a bit so right now uh, so could could you tell us about like w- what are some of the projects you're working on right now so right now i mean i uh, once i came back to india i've been doing a lot of uh, freelance projects like ads and stuff and uh, so for the since january i've been working on a feature length documentary so it's like feature length as in uh, there's like 40 minutes of animation in the documentary which i am animating so the the one of my friends in france is directing the the animation bit so i am the only animator uh-huh. like so <laughs> it's a small team there's one live action director there's one animation director and there's one me and who's animating and there's a color guy in france okay so, so it's like a mix live action and animation yeah 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 mm-hmm. so it's a very sad story it's about a boy <coughs> who um was who went in the wrong company and he ended up joining a gang and everything he was caught selling guns so it's like all his rehabilitation sessions uh and how he turned his life over uh and everything so it's a lot of uh, tragic stuff that i'm sitting and animating so realistic approach like this guy who i'm working with he his name is reza riahi <clears throat> so he i love his work he is a dear friend and he's actually he was the 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 con- concept artist for 
this very really good animated film called uh, breadwinner so okay. yeah so uh, after so i've been working with him on that since january and we are hoping to wrap it up by october so let's see it should come out after that it's going to be in the festival circles for a while and i don't know what if they plan on selling it to netflix or any ott platforms I, oh I that know. would be really nice Yeah, I mean that's that that is sort of like their plan, but I don't know. Like it's it's too far uh, for all that mm. to happen. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean I'm also like meanwhile uh, developing my own ideas. I'm not getting the enough time off late with this project, but uh-huh. yeah, developing. I have some ideas for my own films uh, mm. after this. Let's see. So I'm gonna. So related to that we have uh, uh, we have two very similar questions one is what is the animation industry like in india does it pay and the other one is one which you got which was have you been able to get funding for a short film in india yet and any pointers for this yeah so, so what do you want to say to that so the animation industry in india is like so far like i mean i have nobody to say this i guess because i i don't have much of like i just probably have like one year of experience in the industry in india but like from whatever i've seen it's there's a lot more chaos than uh, <laughs> working in the industry in france like it's not as organized uh, time is not something that uh, it's a luxury over here and i also feel like um i don't know your your uh, this this a lot of mm-hmm. lack of respect which i've seen but that's not the case with everyone it's uh, mm-hmm. yeah i mean like I, i i've had like good and bad experiences so so there's the other extreme also where i'm getting like really good projects where i've been treated really well and oh. yeah i mean but regarding pay yeah i mean it's been quite good so i don't have much of a complaint there uh but that again like it depends depends on the kind of projects if it's an ad like it's a different kind of pay if it's like a smaller scale project like it's not the same so but you choose you try and choose you try to strike a balance between the two mm-hmm. yeah and uh, and I'm regarding the funding yeah <laughs> sorry regarding the funding i don't really know because i'm yet to uh venture out now like after this project gets over that's my plan like to i have a script developed for a short story a uh, short film so let's see let's see i'm going to so guess next time you come for a birthday session you'll have an answer for that <laughs> hopefully hopefully yeah <laughs> <laughs> hopefully yeah okay um so we have a question here what genre of animation do you like and also what do you think animation as a medium should be used today for conveying i don't know like it's genre as in like i don't think i have a specific uh, priority towards like liking towards a certain genre i as long as it's good storytelling i am okay with <laughs> it like it's about getting you engaged and yeah so uh, what was the second part of that what it should be used uh, i don't know like again um, yeah i there's there's a lot of possibilities right now uh, there's this a um, lot of people trying out like vr also i don't know like what the future is but like i am a very mm-hmm. simple man i like uh, i i stick to the basics <laughs> so yeah regular like two d sorry ha huh, no i see it as just a medium yeah. basically mm-hmm. and it depending if if my story requires a uh, 2d animation then that if it requires 3d animation then that if not um, um like even if it, if it sometimes it makes sense to uh, do it on live action uh, it doesn't necessarily oh. have to be animation it all depends on the story so yeah okay um okay so uh, let's move on to another question which we received right now 
which is uh wait just this to me sir what are the major skills or differences in between animators which gives them an edge what are the skills skills or differences between animators which gives them an edge over the others over the others other animators or yeah yeah i think yeah so i mean i don't know like i guess it's uh, how do you stand out i guess as an animator so i i try not to give that too much of a thought i try to be original <laughs> in like what i do i and hmm. again like people talk about like finding your voice and style and i think it's just something like if you love the medium enough like you just keep doing what you like what you enjoy eventually at some point you will find what you you know your voice and um your style and it's not something you find it i think it's like something that needs to constantly evolve and uh, yeah like i guess like if you if you're true to yourself like if you're uh, i mean try to tell your own stories not your own stories as in like stories that you've gone through but like uh just from your observations you know this is just yeah <laughs> i mean there's no particular formula for it uh oh. it's just like don't i i'd say don't give it too much of a thought uh yeah like just just be true i mean even like what my style is today is not technically an original style like in it's there's a lot of things that i've been inspired by and it has influenced me uh mm-hmm. and it just you know together like becomes a style of your own and yeah so again like so so i i was very uh, surprised to find that find out that i like people associate a lot of people associate oil pastels or crayons with me and this is something oh. very new that happened to me because i was somebody who was very uh, scared of colors and my sketches if you look back uh, at my sketchbooks from nid times like it's it's got mostly pencil drawings so i i decided to like you know like face that fear uh, of colors mm-hmm. by actually using oil pastels to draw what i draw and over time okay. i started becoming comfortable and you know like i i guess like you know that became that sort of gave me a certain identity now it's not something i did for the sake of you know like being different or uh okay. i just did and i just ended up like exploring and like have- finding something yeah <laughs> so that's what like there's okay. no particular for- formula like everyone has their own way of mm-hmm. uh, finding that okay yeah um we have another okay this is a pretty open ended question but uh, we have a question saying what is good storytelling so what is good storytelling according to you hmm <laughs> i've never thought of it like that <laughs> uh, i don't know like it's uh, for me i give a lot of importance to the characters like if the characters are interesting uh and if the story is engaging i think that's even if like sometimes there are there are films where you know i was disappointed by the ending of the film but like i still like you know like the film because it was it kept me hooked through the film and mm-hmm. there's no like one uh again like formula for it to be like yeah. a good story right like sometimes like like my wife and i are like so different uh when it comes like opinion of different opinion when it comes to interstellar i love the movie she finds it very uh, okay like she was she thought it was really tacky but then i really <laughs> enjoyed that okay. part because you know i was going through a certain phase of life where i was away from like all my family and i mm-hmm. was seeing an english film in the theaters after ages so <laughs> because all the uh-huh. movies used to come in french in in uh, balance where i was living so this film came out in, in english and i was watching so i was really excited and i was away from my family and it's you know even that talks about like being away from you know the daughter and the 
son like for many years and like i i started like you know really connecting with that idea so i mm-hmm. that was enough for me to like enjoy the film so the, i didn't mind the tackiness or whatever like that happened <laughs> I, mean, i know like the whole love thing in the film is like you know a little yeah it's a bit subjective yeah mm-hmm. so so yeah <laughs> Okay. Uh, wait, really quick. We have like two minutes left right now, and here's one yeah, question I really wanted you to answer, which is, how was your experience in acting in the Malayalam <laughs> film uh, Var Varane Avasya Mundu? Avasya Mundu. Avarne Avasya Mundu. Yeah, Avasya Mundu. Yeah, I okay. mean that was, was not experience? something that I think I thought I would be doing, but uh, yeah, I mean Anup Satyan, the director, who was also an Indian, uh, was uh, his. It was his first film, so he. uh he had in fact uh, asked me like for uh, acting in his graduation film at nid but it didn't work out so he somehow like remembered that and called me back would you be interested in acting this <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was so i i like i said you know i see animation as just a medium to tell stories right so i mean that is the truth not something i see it as but yeah. <laughs> so i wanted to see live action also like how that world works so i said okay let me just give it a try because this is something that came uh, to me but like i was really worried about like making a fool of myself which i i, I still can't see the film myself i <laughs> i think i've done a oh, like a really terrible job <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah no it was a very different experience and like i at an id you see like you even if you are acting in a film you go and you know you are a part of you know helping the crew out and everything but like here it was yeah. i just got to sit under the fan i didn't i was not allowed to sweat so i couldn't go and help out i was feeling like itchy from inside like uh, <laughs> like i want to go and like help we have, we have half a minute left so like oh, yes, yeah yes, just yes. just keep going keep going keep yeah. going it's okay Yeah, no, no, no. So I felt guilty, like sitting there and like getting the fan and getting juice. <laughs> But it was a great experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But would you do it again? No. Yeah, I mean, if I yeah. if it comes along, yeah, I mean, I would uh, give it a try. But I don't think I'll okay. go and find myself a job.